you're watching, you survived the first week of back to school. Oh, what a week it was. Having to break relaxation mode to get up early to beat the early morning traffic and the hustle and bustle that going back to school brings. But hey, you made it. Welcome to another edition of Jamaica Magazine. Stay tuned as we take you through the pages. Parents, how do you think your children feel when they are beaten? I feel so sad when my mother beats me. It makes me feel so angry. I feel embarrassed and I feel like you just don't care. It has been proven that coercive parenting is directly linked to the aggression your children are displaying in schools. The National Parenting Support Commission is imploring you, parents, rethink your actions, stop beating your children. A message from the National Parenting Support Commission in collaboration with Ministry of Education, Youth and Information for improved safety and security in schools. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Friday, January 12. Provisional data from the Jamaica Tourist Board, JTB, show a record 4.3 million tourists have visited Jamaica in 2017. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett says this represents a 12.1% increase over arrivals in 2016. We broke the 4 million mark in December and by the end of December, the end of December, we had gone to 4.3 million arrivals. And that is a 12.1% increase over 2016. This figure comprised 2,353,461 stopover arrivals and 1,946,780 cruise passengers. And that is providing a revenue flow to Jamaica of approximately 3 billion US dollars. The minister was speaking at the official opening of the Knutsford Express bus service depot at the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay, St. James on Tuesday. He said it is public-private partnerships like the one which led to the establishment of the express bus service which have helped to improve the local tourism product. Mr. Bartlett said the historic tourism outturn for 2017 was a milestone achievement for Jamaica, noting that it is the first time that the country brought more than 500,000 additional visitors in a single calendar year. The minister added that 2017's tourism revenue inflow indicates that the island generated an additional nearly U.S. $500 million of earnings in one year. The minister has lauded the industry stakeholders, including entrepreneurs and workers, for their collective contribution to the exponential growth in visitor arrivals and earnings. Relief supplies of food and other necessary items have been airlifted to residents marooned in the flood-ravaged communities of Bourbon and Maidstone in Portland. For nearly a week, the communities have been cut off from vehicular access as heavy rains have left certain areas under 15 feet of water. This has forced residents to traverse the communities with the use of makeshift rafts. Bourbon and Maidstone are still experiencing light to moderate showers, which has impeded work to fully restore the communities and to allow water runoff. The local government ministry, the National Works Agency, and other first responders have managed to clear other road blockages in the parish, rendering access to at least single-lane traffic in some communities. Persons traveling to the parishes of Portland and St. Mary are being advised to exercise caution due to the continued rainfall adversely impacting the communities. Energy Minister Dr. Andrew Wheatley says the Jamaican government will be working to ensure continued growth of Petrojam as part of its commitment to the country's energy security. Minister Wheatley was speaking at the opening of Petrojam Limited's new administrative office in Montego Bay Freeport on Tuesday. We are committed to the refinery upgrade. We will be embarking on a number of initiatives to ensure that the country's sole refinery continues to operate at the highest standard. 
Minister Wheatley lauded Petrojam on the opening of their new administrative office, which was named in honor of the company's first Montego Bay terminal supervisor who passed away in November 2011. Equipment worth $45,000 U.S. dollars is being procured by the Ministry of National Security to recover stolen cell phones. Portfolio Minister Robert Montague says the technology will arrive on the island in the next six to eight weeks. Once acquired, police will be trained and the technology deployed on a phased basis. In addition to that, the ministry will be proceeding to launch a website so persons can register their phones. So if your, phones, your phone is stolen and you're outside of the zone we're operating in initially, we can lock down the phone so that the phone just becomes a paperweight to the person who would have stolen the phone. It's estimated that some 2,400 cell phones are stolen annually. Minister Montague was speaking Thursday as he handed over 14,000 commemorative pins in recognition of the 150th anniversary of the Jamaica Constabulary Force. I just encourage all members of the JCF to wear this pin with pride because it is, in fact, a milestone in our history. And finally, Saturday, January 13, is the final day for payment of outstanding traffic ticket fines. Tax Administration Jamaica, TAJ, says offices island-wide will be open on Saturday to accommodate the payments. Opening hours for offices in Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth, Downtown Kingston, Constant Spring, St. Andrew, Montego Bay, St. James, and Spanish Town, St. Catherine are between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Also opening for the same hours are branches in Port Maria, Maypen, Mandeville, Savannah Lamar, and St. Anne's Bay. Meanwhile, the TAJ says the Portmore Tax Office will continue its regular Saturday opening time from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Motorists can also choose to make payments online using the designated e-tax spots at any of the listed locations. The 45-day extension of the traffic ticket amnesty, which started on November 27 last year, is to facilitate no penalties for motorists with tickets issued from September 1, 2010 to October 31, 2017. The TAJ says it has collected approximately $150 million in outstanding traffic fines since the start of this phase of the amnesty on November 27, 2017. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Looking to enhance your professional skills and competences with training of the highest quality? Then apply today to the Justice Training Institute, JTI. JTI offers certificate courses in computer applications, CSEC math and English, financial crimes investigation, courtroom protocols and procedures, diplomas in paralegal studies, court reporting, and more. For more information, call 928-4624, visit us at Four Camp Road, or go to the website jti.edu.jm. The Justice Training Institute, training for improved performance. Months. In 2017, gains were made towards enhancing the access, quality and affordability of the public healthcare system. We cannot continue to limp along with an ailing infrastructure and pretend that we are able to respond to the health challenges of our, that our people face. We have to do something about it and we have to start now. Watch our flashback on some of the advances made in public health care in 2017 on this station, coming in Jamaica Magazine on Monday, January 15, 2018. Up next, see how the Ministry of Justice took strides in accomplishing their mandate in 2017. We need a justice system that complete cases and deliver decisions with, with due expedition. Speed court decisions can have significant and needed economic benefits. Bargaining is beneficial in many ways, reducing the cost of trials and demands on an overburdened court system, conserving the time of judges, the courts and the prosecutors, 
Victims are spared the trauma of reliving the experience in court. Not every applicant who applies to be a JP will be accepted. We have to make sure that there are persons of unquestionable integrity, good character, and persons who will not only volunteer, but are community-minded persons. If a person is to be detained, the police will have to convince the GP that this person is suspected. And if the GP disagrees, the man must be released. If the GP agrees, within 24 hours, that person must be taken before a parish judge. We hope to have the necessary constitutional changes to allow retired judges to act on an as-needed basis to assist with the timely completion of the probate, divorce, and the many other pending matters. I am proud to say that this facility, which is the new home of the coroners and special coroners courts, is really well appointed, has adequate space, and has completely new furnishings. We are bringing these centers to you so that if there are problems, you can utilize them so that Peace can reign across these communities and across Jamaica. The relevant audiovisual infrastructure is being installed in the courts across the island to relieve the judges of taking evidence by long hand. The evidence will be readily available and thumb drives to make the process of completion of cases and preparation of judgments easier. I say, I expect improvement, improvement, improvement. We need a timely disposal of criminal cases. I have said that we want to put in place and utilize what the Chief Justice has introduced, sentence reduction. From time to time over the years, requests have been made for statistics and we have not been in a position to provide them. And so this significant progress that we have made in centralizing the core statistics is remarkable. In truth, every stakeholder in the justice system needs to start thinking outside the box. We have to find ways and means to make justice a priority, easily accessible and readily delivered in a timely manner. With our crime problem, swift and predictable justice can be the most powerful deterrent to crime. I grow on the car. Only to see a man stopping on a big road. But some people are crossing on a blind corner. When motorists have to stop on the green light to allow people to cross, it creates problems. People just can't walk out on the road, some man. From a corner, from behind vehicle, they need to be more careful, man. We have overhead bridges, pedestrian crossings, and crosswalks. Some of them even have signals to tell you when to cross. People, walk on the sidewalk. If there is none, walk on the right side. And please, if you can't find a pedestrian crossing, make sure the road clear before you cross. 
drive has need for drive good. But pedestrian need for walk good too. Walk good. Long gone are the days when a blackboard and chalk were the main means of tangibly communicating with a student. Now there are whiteboards and markers, computers, tablets, laptops. Teaching methods have certainly changed. So too it is how our students learn. I will get there. I will get there. I will get there somehow. Getting an education is a critical first step on the path to achieving our goals and dreams, whatever that may be. But too often the academic path has been limited in some ways and sometimes those who do not fit into the system get left behind. This is why the Education Ministry, led by Minister Ruel Reed, has launched the Alternative Pathways to Secondary Education. The Alternative Pathway to Secondary Education will be guided by a philosophy which is interactive and learner-centered and ensure that every student gets his or her opportunity to achieve in the selected areas of learning based on their aptitude, interest, and ability at the secondary level. The new approach is based on inclusion rather than exclusion. Firstly, it is grounded in core values which insist that education is best delivered as an active pursuit, doing rather than simply passively caring. Secondly, it teaches us respect for diversity in curriculum, teaching, and learning methods, and the use of teaching tools. Thirdly, it is also self-examining, demanding inquiry into our practices and respect for all our learners. And so students transitioning from the primary to the secondary level will be placed on the path to success, armed with tools tailored for their needs. So how does it work? So we have what we call pathway one. And I don't want us to treat pathway one because we say one, two, three, to mean one is more important than two or three. We have to use a number for recognition. So we have a standard curriculum, a standard program. But what will happen for learners who are on this pathway these learners will be coached, they will be provided with support, but because of their level of maturity, because some of them are so creative in terms of the intellectual strides that they tend to make, because some of them are so self-directed, they can manage their learning and all of that, they remain on a pathway that allows them to manage their learning and achieve the goals of the curriculum. Pathway 2 is treated as a transitional pathway. For this pathway, some of our learners are struggling. It does not mean they are struggling in every area. It is saying that they need some extra help. So we're going to be providing for these learners additional support. We're going to be monitoring these learners. Those students on the secondary path, way three, will also have an opportunity to pursue a career to meet their specified needs. Those at this level will be largely engaged in technical skills training. So what we're addressing here is the discredited notion that one size fits all. We believe the alternative pathway re represents a best fit for Jamaica and for secondary education system. I'm convinced that if we all work together, students, parents, teachers, school, the opposition, the ministry, or the diaspora, all our stakeholders, then the alternative pathways to secondary education program will prove to be a major success. I will get there. I will get there. I will get there somehow. The business process outsourcing DPO sector. 
employing more than 6,000 Jamaicans, putting the youth at work. The kinds of work we are doing right now in Jamaica through our 40 companies established in this industry include applications like Netflix, applications like Amazon. So you're speaking to people about their credit cards. We are doing applications like tech support. So if you have a problem with your, your um, iPhone, iMac or laptop, technical questions, those questions are being answered in some of our BPO operations. That's not a sweatshop. Humana has over 400 agents here that when people call the US to query about their health plan, those calls are being handled in Jamaica. <laughs> That's not Loin, that's not you're working for one of the largest healthcare companies in the world. The local BPO industry creating employment, boosting the economy. Job hunting is no easy task. They're sourcing the job, working and reworking your resume, and then the interview. Are you ready for the face to face contact? Here are some tips to ensure that you put your best foot forward. So that long-awaited call for the job you applied for is finally here. What do you do? How do you get ready? Well, here are some tips to get it right the first time. Because of course, first impressions do last. To start out, do some research on the company so that in your interview, you can present yourself as a worthy candidate who will be able to contribute positively to the organization's vision and mission. Determine the three most important benefits you bring to an organization and ensure this is shared in some way or form during the interview. This will show your potential employer what separates you from the next person. Be prepared to answer three common questions. Who are you? Tell me about yourself. Why are you looking for a job? What is your salary expectation? Be prepared to sell yourself with your answers. Keep your answers short and to the point. Avoid rambling. Don't confuse yourself. Create a list of questions you'd like to ask the interview panel or hiring manager because you want to know if the job is right for you too. Okay, so that's it for the discussion aspect. Let's tackle the look and general do's and don'ts. A navy, dark grey or black suit is appropriate for most positions. Point to note here, avoid combing or brushing your hair with your jacket on. Sometimes less is more. Avoid outlandish hairstyles and makeup. Keep a clean look. Modesty is key. Before entering the building, chew mint, gum, or breath mint. Don't take your cell phone into the interview. If you need to take the device with you, please turn it off. Bring a portfolio with pen, paper, and copies of your resume to the interview. There you go, you're all set for the interview. Go and ace it. Developmental planning must precede construction. Risk analysis must inform all our actions. Codes must be adhered to. Construction must be sound. And of course, where construction is done outside of the codes, statutes, and regulations, then enforcement must come into play. It's Earthquake Awareness Week, and we took to the streets of Montego Bay to find out what Jamaicans are doing to prepare for an earthquake. Watch this. <laughs> I try to get my stuff in place like preparing candles, prepare food, get thin stuff where I can have so that whenever the earthquake is there, I'm able to move on and I'm not suffering from any form of lack of food or lack of water. I try to fill water and stuff like those. What I know we do is keep our documents in plastic bags so they are easily grabbable and we, try, we have two small children, so we make sure that we always have at least a week 
in excess of food? I am prepared in the sense of um, wherever I am at the time of an earthquake, I will not try to be panicked. If there's an earthquake, I'll try to get to a safe location. Well, at this time, I don't, I don't prepare for no earthquake, earthquake you know. And I know that them say, if, if, if there's an earthquake, the first place that you go underneath the table or underneath the bed. Major Clive Davis, Director General of the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPEM, is reminding the public that during an earthquake it is important to stay calm. If you're inside a building, get under a sturdy desk, cover your head and hold on. If you're outdoors, go to an open area away from trees, buildings, utility poles and wires. We're asking Jamaicans in whatever way, shape or form you can, do something, do something to exercise your earthquake awareness, your earthquake preparedness. And if you're in doubt, make contact with this office, visit our website, we have a host of documents ready for you. Um, we would also want persons to visit the local authorities, the local municipal corporations, because they too, we have pamphlet, brochure, all of that ready. Let's get prepared as we try to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business. The funeral for Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the Jamaica Information Service, Ian Boyne, will be held on Sunday, January 14. The service will be between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. at the National Indoor Sports Center in Kingston. Persons may view the body prior to the start of the service from 8.30 a.m. to 10 a.m. His body will be interred at the Dovecot Memorial Park in St. Catherine. Members of the public are invited to join in the celebration of the life of the veteran journalist. And for those who can't be in attendance, the service will be streamed live on the JIS Facebook page and broadcast live on JNN. Thanks for spending time with us. The proverb that we leave with you is, Big blanket make man sleep late. What does this mean? An overabundance of luxuries causes one to become complacent and to take life's blessings for granted. And Jamaica is blessed, not true. So let's treat the people and our beautiful island home like treasure. Remember to keep up to date with the latest government information. Join us online at jis.gov.jm or watch our programs on our YouTube channel. And be sure to check out our social media platforms. You may also catch a new edition of Jamaica Magazine tomorrow on this very station. Until then, I'm Audrey Williams. Take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.